Hello, everyone. I'm Audrey Tang. I'm very happy to be here virtually to share with you some of the work we've been doing in Taiwan around open government. Now, before we begin, I would like to invite you to use your phone and get into this website, slido.com, slido.com, and enter today's date, 4 to 6, so that we can get into the same chat room. And you can ask me there any question during my 15 minutes talk, and I'll strive to answer them all during the 45 minutes conversation following the pre-recorded talk. So uh, when President Tsai Ing-wen uh, was inaugurated last May, I was very happy because I voted for her. Um, the main reason I voted for her is that I live with seven cats and two dogs, and she's a fellow animal lover with similar values such as well, animal welfare, but also cultural diversity and marriage equality and so on. Um, and, um, and this is our first family, by the way. So, um, but during the uh, transition of power, which occurred during the election in January uh, to May, there's four months, it was remarkably peaceful. Um, I was touring around Europe at the time, giving talks and such uh, around open data which is one of the work that we've been doing under the previous cabinet uh, with Premier uh, Simon Zhang. Uh, and Simon's interesting because he's a Google engineer, and um, uh, together uh, his cabinet mandated that all the government data uh, must be made open, of course, preserving privacy and uh, national secrets. But uh, it is because of an independent, nonpartisan premier um, did we have a most peaceful transition in Taiwan's history? And also because our new premier, um, Dr. Lin Chen, is also um, independent. The two independent premiers did something that never happened before in Taiwan. Um, the outgoing cabinet asked all the ministries to produce a checkpoint document uh, detailing all the evidence of all the policy that they've been doing and upload it to the public internet so that people, including me, could have a uh, look of what has happened, what has transpired, and what is going on. Um, and the new cabinet then downloads it from the public internet for um, the transition. And I think this is uh, very symbolic, because as uh, President Tsai said in her inauguration speech, uh, she said before, democracy was a showdown between two opposing values, but this transition showed that now a democracy could be a conversation uh, between many diverse values. And so this is the principle of open government that we're working on. It is to increase dialogue between the many diverse values in the society in a peaceful way. And of course, we had a uh, demonstration of this sort before back in 2014, uh, when a bunch of students occupied a parliament because of the legislators refused to deliberate a particular trade service act. Now, um, the students, the occupiers, did not just occupy in protest. In fact, the demonstration was more like a demo um, of how can we involve half a million people on the street into a meaningful discussion between the many diverse values around the trade service agreement. So around the time, um, the GovZero movement of uh, hackers facilitated such a conversation publicly using digital technology for people who are both pro the Occupy and also against the Occupy with all of their different reasons so that we can see the deliberation results of the previous day and deepen the conversation the following day and after 22 days uh, arrive at a consensus. Now, why are there so many civic hackers in Taiwan volunteering to work on democracy? I think it's because our generation, I'm 35 now, is the first to speak out freely. Free speech was banned for 40 years during martial law, as many of you well know. And the year 1988 brought both the freedom of press and personal computers. And the year 1996 brought the first presidential election and the World Wide Web. So internet and democracy, they evolved together, spread together, and integrated with each other in my generation. So what we free software hackers 
uh, see free as freedom. We always focus on the social impact and how it can liberate the people's potential for communicating and exchanging their experiences, their reflections. So after the Occupy, by the end of 2014, city-level elections brought many occupiers, sometimes surprisingly, to themselves into local governments. And on a national level, the new premier reached out to civic hackers uh, to try to incorporate the Occupy style of policymaking into national matters. And one of our first major tasks was a virtual epidemic that has paralyzed many governments around the globe, um, is the Uber. Uh, Uber is not just one company, it's a spreading idea, a virus of the mind known as sharing economy. Governments couldn't do much about it. Um, a city may shut down its local office, but the app just keeps running. And so uh, the taxi drivers surrounded the Ministry of Transport and Communication protests demanding negotiation. But such memes are like biological virus, and we cannot really negotiate with such an um, idea. So uh, back then, Minister Jacqueline Tsai, in charge of cyberspace affairs at the time, wanted to build with the civil society a discussion forum that involves all stakeholders. Now, Taiwan didn't have such a national commission of deliberation, so the minister joined GovZero hackers to invent such a process. And we think that thinking deeply about something together is an effective vaccine against such a virus of mind. When everyone, including passengers and drivers, academics, public servants, listen to each other and form a consensus, we become immune to future PR campaigns. And so such a proper deliberation always starts with facts and our personal facts, our experiences of what do we know collectively. And then it proceeds to how do we feel about such facts and everybody has a different feeling and that's okay. And once we have a majority of feelings uh, expressed in online forum and in offline dialogue, we um, consult with stakeholders to come us with ideas and the best idea are the ideas that take care of the most of people's feelings. And then finally, we ratify such ideas into decisions. And however, if any part of this process is not transparent, then people on the street to the left did not actually get the same facts as the policymakers, the private sectors, and the professional academics, and so on, on the right-hand side. And so when the facts differ, and everybody's feelings can't really speak to one another, Ideas become ideologies. Those are virus of the mind, more potent, that blind people to new facts and to each other's feelings. So our first step is always open data, that is to make all the facts available, not just numbers, but also meeting records, studies, analysis, and ask the private sector and the civil society to publish so that we can all be on the same page. And then we hold an interactive survey. We presented participants in groups and showed yes or no statements one at a time both them. And all the participants had an avatar. When everyone click agree or disagree, the avatar moves toward the group of people who think like them. But we say that we need to start all the uh, statements with 我觉得, I think that, I feel that, so that people can propose more uh, nuanced feelings. And we take all the feelings that uh, convince the super majority of people as the uh, stakeholder topics to determine the agenda that we used to deliberate with the consultation um, forum with the stakeholders as shown here. And so after four weeks, participants has converged on a coherent set of reflections, expectations, suggestions, so successfully forming a coherent agenda for the stakeholders to respond to in public. And it is then uh, ratified and then the administration, after ratification, uh, saw that, you know, taxi no longer to be painted yellow and app-based taxis are now free to operate and apps must display car and driver identification, estimated fare and customer rating. And in fact, Uber, just uh, after a brief pause, has restarted its, its operation um, just mid-April this year under the new uh, regulation and as a uh, formal participant to the um, legal operation. So it is with this uh, experience do I enter the civil service as the digital minister and 
trying to scale this experience, for it was an experiment. Uh, but if we want to apply it to all the policy making, there's many uh, issues of scale that we need to resolve together with the professional public service. And so this is what's called a public digital innovation space. And so um, we start with a forum that records um, everybody's questions for the digital minister and I answer them publicly within 24 days. You would think that I get overwhelmed, but actually people consulted each other's questions very effectively. And because each reply is sent to thousands of subscribers, it creates a frequently asked questions that let the people steer me toward the direction that they want for open government. And in addition to that, uh, all the meetings uh, that I hold all the official visits and so on, I publish as uh, transcripts on the website, track.pds.tw. And this includes um, professional lobbyists such as um, Uber's David Plouffe. Uh, we had a very good discussion, uh, but it was always the reminder that a recorder is there to stand for the other stakeholders. And so it is with this transparent way do we conduct uh, the discussions necessary to bring the stakeholders together on a policy uh, during the policy making process. And so um, after I become the digital minister, I built the same tools that we use in the startup and in the technology world, uh, such as you know shared file storage, multi-user spreadsheets and editors and documents, Kanban boards, uh, mind maps, and so on in a collaborative manner, but behind the uh, cybersecurity department verified intranet so that uh, we manage the entire policy making process using such collaborative forms to encourage uh, collaboration between ministries and between units and between the public sector, the private sector, and the civil society. For the next few minutes, I'll just play a video outlining the open government process, and then we'll get to the questions.各位电视机前的爸爸妈妈也没有用3D投影 一起熬煮来个七七四个小时然后最后还要用昆布菜头来增加高汤的深度等一下等一下不对不对我告诉你我妈妈教我们家祖传八百年的这个汤底里面一定要有葱姜蒜辣椒花椒要先炒过再放那个中药把脚拉小回拉桂皮拉然后把这些东西争什么争别再争啦让线上正在参与公共政府开放直播的网友来告诉大家争什么掺在一起做旧影平台大火锅不就行了笨蛋他后面有说笨蛋吗
，哎，这个减肥可以吃吗？大家放心，我们火锅制定的过程不但从最先期就纳入了各界的专业意见。而且呢，在过程里面也会照顾到各个不同的利益相关的群体的声音，只有这样子才能够让全民的腰围，呃，不，幸福指数达到最大值。太好吃了，我从来没有吃过这么开放的火锅，食材的料理方式都公开在里面，参与的关系人都可以尽情的发言，再配合逐字稿的发布，可以让外界了解料理的过程。为什么？为什么要让我吃到这么开放的火锅？要是我以后吃不到怎么办呢、啊？没有关系，不怕吃不到。现在就上 p d s 点 tw 公共数位创新空间小组的网站，让大家随时都能够更新开放政府的资讯。p d s 祝大家吉祥如意，今年行大运！耶、yeah! ！